So I'm just going to use this dark colour now and just outline the buildings. It's almost like a, a bit of distant land. And then what I'm going to do is square off a little bit now, which I'm doing with this little quarter inch flat brush. It's quite a neutral colour. It's just a way of just making a few marks before you block in. You can see here now I'm actually painting with my medium sized brush. It's like a half an inch. And I'm mixing up some of the blues, some of the browns, really kind of um, getting lots of different shades because these are going to be our buildings. When you're mixing with your acrylics, try not to add very much water. You don't want to water them down so they're like watercolours. You want them creamy like oil paints. Sometimes acrylics can be a little bit stiff, so do add a little bit of water or an acrylic medium should be fine. So I'm using the tip of the brush now to get some of the tops of the buildings. And as you can see, I'm really varying the colors. The other thing I try to do is I try not to overstretch the paint. So keep loading paint all the time, fresh paint on your brush, because otherwise it, the acrylic can tend to break down and it can look very dull and flat. So I'm just painting to the water's edge here. Just don't worry too much about the line being straight. And just to let you know, the reason why I've used gesso, it's an acrylic primer as a base for this painting, is because I had a painting underneath. But a lot of the times you can buy, you know, uh, acrylic boards and canvases already primed, so don't worry. But you can prime old paintings and other surfaces as well, so it's quite good. So I've actually got a big pot of that on standby. A couple of important things to do when you're with acrylics, always keep sort of rinsing your brush and then taking all the excess water off. Don't leave acrylic paint on your brush. It can dry the brush out and you cannot get the paint off and you have to use a restorer to get the paint off. So best to avoid it, either leave them in the pot of water or rinse them. So now I'm painting the water. I'm using all these different blues I've got. Don't worry if you haven't got this many blues. I enjoy the, I just love painting in different blues. I'm using the Prussian, the Ultramarine, a little bit of turquoise. And I'm also using this large one inch flat brush. But just use the biggest brush that you have. Remember to keep loading the brush, keep varying the colours. I'm working dark to light large to small so there's big marks to begin with an acrylic painting and darker tones and you put on your lighter shades later. I am painting pretty fast, I haven't speeded up the film, I just paint in this very fast way, I get so excited, I just love painting in acrylics. What I'm doing here is I'm putting on a slightly lighter colour blue and just sort of pasting it on there making sure I get plenty of paint don't try to fill in all the white gaps. You can see lots of white gaps there. That's just the gesso underneath. So we're gonna be painting another layer over this. So don't try to be a perfectionist and fill everything in. This is just your foundation stage. So I've finished the water and now I'm gonna paint the sky. I will paint another layer over the sky. So this again is the first stage. I will be putting lighter colors on here because the sky is light. So I'm using some yellows, just cadmium yellow with a touch of white. And I'm gonna show you this lovely light behind these buildings. It's like the sunset and it's quite nice and it really sets off against those lovely dark buildings. Don't worry about too much detail there at the moment. Just block it in. You're gonna be finessing later. So I'm just putting this creamy colour just around the top of the buildings. One of the tricky things to do in acrylics is blending because they do dry very quickly. So I would say at the beginning stage paint on a slightly smaller scale or get bigger brushes and make sure you've got plenty of paint on your brush. So I've used a bit of the burgundy here with some white so I'm putting some of that pinky shade in the sky. I will show you in a tick what I do about blending. So I'm going to start getting a little bit of blue in that pinky shade now to show a little sort of more of a violet colour sky just at the top. The darker tones will be at the top. That was a little bit too dark so I've just added some white. So I'm just putting that bluey pinky shade just at the top of the sky with my flat brush. Just blending away there, just getting those last bits on there. Don't worry, as I say, about the white gaps. We'll deal with those later. As you saw there, I wet my finger and I'm just blending the paints. You don't want your finger too wet, but just enough to get the paints moving. It's a warm day today and they do dry ever so quickly. 
So I've given my painting a blow dry and I'm going to do that second layer over the sky. So I've mixed up some white and some ultramarine and I'm just painting this now wet on dry. Really trying to get lots of paint on my brush, getting that light coloured blue at the top of the sky. Be bold and use large marks. Don't be afraid of it. Try to sort of attack it rather than be timid with it. Remember to give your brush a good rinse. And now I'm mixing up a more of a lighter, pinkier shade just in that middle bit of the sky. And then some of the yellowy shade just behind the buildings. Now I'm being a little bit careful, believe it or not. And I'm just sort of cutting in a bit better. And now again, I'm just blending because it dried out a little bit. Just that bit where the pink joins the yellow and then the blue. So I'm going to leave my sky to dry and I'm mixing up a light blue. I'm using some of that lighter colour at the top, the white and the yellow. I'm just adding it to some of the blue and putting it on the right hand side. I'm using a large brush and I'm being ever so bold. I'm really sort of painting over the top of that underpainting and it goes on so well as you can see. There's no little white gaps coming through now because that underpainting has really helped me. I'm using similar colours to what I used before, slightly lighter, really heavily loading my brush. I want a bit more light on the right hand side. I don't know why, I just felt like maybe the sun is catching it more there. But as you can see I'm really attacking this this painting really putting this paint on I'm not afraid of it I want to be the boss of my painting and not the other way around and be worried so I'm really sort of loading this paint on I will put some more darks and I will put some more reflections in the water so as you can see there now I put slightly darker blue I'm putting some Prussian blue in with my cobalt my teal colour that I'm using and I'm just putting that little bit of dark on the bottom corner. Now I am actually putting some of that same dark just at the top of the horizon then it looks like the reflections of the buildings and I'm just using this for a sort of feathery brush stroke. Remember to keep loading your brush, have plenty of paint, don't let that paint get sticky. So I've allowed my painting to dry and I'm going to use that little wooden peg, the little keys that you use to stretch the back of box canvas paintings. And I'm using a little bit of the burgundy, but you could use like a burnt sienna, touch of yellow. I'm just making lighter marks. I'm printing with this wooden peg. It's got a nice sort of flat surface and I'm just using some dark paint now just getting some darks and details and lights in here try to have fun with it it's a semi-abstract painting you're giving the impression or the illusion of these buildings in the background without any detail really so I'm putting I'm sort of scrubbing this sort of paint on and some of the paler marks look like buildings behind I've moved my water pot out of the way there because that was in danger of being tipped over but here I am again printing away it's starting to look really effective I'm going to put some slightly lighter marks now just so it looks like the lights are on and there's light coming out of some of the windows. I'm using the plastic card and I'm using a very pointy edge and it's an orangey yellowy colour I'm using there and I'm putting the same thing in the water as well to give that little bit of sparkly reflection. I've also put some of the darks in the water earlier as well just to kind of show the reflections of the buildings. This is hopefully when your painting comes to life. It's my favourite bit of the painting. All those sort of building blocks and marks that you've made, those foundations that you've created, now they come to life. It starts to look like a cityscape with the water in front of it. Don't go too mad. There's always a danger of overdoing this. And actually, that little left-hand yellow bit, I did actually remove it after the tutorial was over because I felt it was a bit too strong. But I just wanted to point that out because sometimes it's difficult to see when you're in the midst of painting where you've gone wrong or what you need to change. Squeezed out a little bit of cadmium red there and I'm just putting a few little dots of that, not too many, but I just wanted a few little red lights in around that cityscape there just to give it a little bit of something, you know, a little bit of pop cleaned off my plastic card and I've dipped it into some of that Prussian blue and I'm just putting some sort of vertical lines in there they could be anything really it could be I mean there could even be some boats in front of those buildings there you know um, anything you like um, you know just sort of making marks like that they could be cranes you know it's a city so you're kind of creating all this sort of 
details. It doesn't have to be the sort of photographic. It can just give that impression. And I'm just making little dabs here. You can get very carried away with doing this and it is so much fun, but believe it or not, I'm trying to be as controlled as possible. So I felt that vertical line that's right in the center there was a bit strong. So if you want to remove something like that, do it straight away, get some clean water, wet it, little puddle there, because the painting underneath is dry, and then just wipe it off with some kitchen towel. And there we are, hey presto, it has vanished. So I'm gonna do the same thing with some lighter colored paint, just a few light lines. It could be the edges of buildings. It's just to give that little impression there, you know, to balance things out, maybe on the edge of the water, the light on the edge of the water, all sorts of little sparkly bits, and also some more light in those windows. Getting towards the end of the painting now, it's all about those lights and details. I'm gonna put a few more marks just in the water itself, some little reflections, some ripples, and I'm using the light blue with a touch of white with the plastic card. This has been so much fun. I really hope it has inspired you to have a go with acrylics in this slightly loosened up way, quite abstract, this little cityscape with water. You know, just giving it a little spatter now at the end. I love to finish off my acrylics and watercolors with a spatter because it just stops me from fiddling and from painting. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I do hope you've learned something from it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.